Hi everyone, this is Dr. Jyoti Bala. I welcome you all on my YouTube channel. In this session, we will be exploring about biological databases, which is quite crucial in our bio IT and biotechnological sector. So we will be trying to focus on the biological databases, the most commonly used one. So let's get started. To begin with, let's first understand what is biological databases. Biological databases are the collection of structured biological data that can be assessed, searched and analyzed by researchers and scientists. It plays a crucial role in bioinformatics and computational biology by providing a centralized repository of biological data such as genomics, proteomic and other biological sets. So you can say a biological database is an organized collection of biological information such as DNA, protein sequences, molecular structure, even genetic variation data and gene expression data, etc. These databases are designed to facilitate efficient data storage, retrieval and analysis allowing researcher to explore and interpret these biological data on a large scale. Usually, there are several types of biological information and databases which are available, but we will be highlighting here the most widely used one. If I specifically talk about biotech industry, so the most common one is your nucleotide sequences based databases. It actually stores DNA and RNA sequences. Few examples of such kind of databases are your gene bank, EMBL, DDBG. On parallel, if you're working on protein related project, then the protein sequence kind of databases you can explore. We store the information about the proteins and peptides. Few such examples are Uniprot and PDB. If you're working and exploring about gene expression, then you can try GEO, Array Express. And if your focus area is on structure, especially the protein, then you can try our CSB, PDB databases and all. If you work on genetic variation or mutation kind of work, then you can try DBSNP. So not only the sequence and structures are important in our area, apart from that, pathways and molecular network is also a significant area. So if you are working on molecular pathways and network, in that scenario, you can use CAG, Reactome and String. If you're working on genomics or omics kind of work, especially the genomic, then you can try Ensemble and UCS3 Genome Browser. A scientific literature is a significant part of our research. So all the researchers and scientists will be requiring these. And for that purpose, you can use PubMed and PubMed Central. And for metabolic data, you can try CAG. So moving ahead, let's try to understand few significant application of biological databases. You can do genome annotations and analysis based on those data. You can analyze and investigate the protein structure, prediction and modeling and utilize these things in various projects such as drug designing project. You can also identify the genetic variation and disease causing mutation. Such kind of information is very significant in the areas of cancer research and oncoinformatics. You can also perform comparative genomics and evolutionary studies to better understand the phylogeny and taxonomy. Additionally, gene expression analysis and functional genomics can be done by using these information. As I said, this biological information you can also utilize for your drug discovery and target identification for your CAD project. And on parallel to understand biological system, you can do system biology and pathways analysis. These biological data help us to understand the biological network analysis and thereby to better understand the biological system and physiology. Let's try to understand what are the key properties of a good biological databases. A good biological database should have several important properties to ensure its usefulness and reliability. Here are some key properties of a well-designed biological databases. It should be comprehensive. The database should provide comprehensive coverage of relevant biological data, including diverse species, genetic information, molecular structure, and functional annotation. It should aim to include a wide range of data type to support various research needs. Additionally, data accuracy is a crucial in biological databases. The information stored should be reliable, validated, and regularly updated to reflect the latest scientific findings. 
the database should employ rigorous quality control measure to ensure the accuracy of the data set additionally the database should be easily accessible to user allowing them to retrieve the data quickly and efficiently it should have the user friendly interface and support multiple search option including the keyword search advanced queries and filtering capabilities and option next a good biological database should support interoperability meaning that it should be compatible with the other databases and bioinformatics tool this allows the researcher and scientist to integrate data from multiple sources and perform complex analysis across different databases Moreover the database should adhere to established standard and format of data representations such as sequence file format ontologies and controlled vocabulary this promote consistency facilitate data exchange and enables integration with other resources documentation and metadata are also important point the database should provide clear documentation and metadata describing the data source data collection method and data processing procedure this helps user to understand the contents of data and interpret it correctly data security and privacy is also very important point here given the sensitive nature of biological data the database should have robust security measures in place to protect the confidentiality and privacy of the data it should compile with the relevant data protection regulation and ensure secure accessible control additionally the database should undergo regular updates and maintenance to incorporate new data fix errors and improve functionality timely update ensure that the database remain relevant and valuable to the research community community engagement is also a significant point a good biological database should foster a community driven approach encouraging the user feedback collaboration and contribution this helps in improving data quality identifying error and expanding the scope and usefulness of this databases and finally the long term sustainability database should have the sustainable infrastructure and funding to ensure its long run maintenance it should be supported by an organization or consortium committed to its continuous development and upkeep with these property a biological database can provide a valuable resource for researcher and scientific community facilitating data analysis hypothesis generation and discovery in the field of bioinformatics you can divide these biological databases into two classes the primary biological databases and secondary biological databases so the primary uh, biological databases actually depends on the original and curated data on parallel your secondary biological databases are actually derived and curated data so they are actually dependent on the primary data your primary biological data types are usually raw experimental data while in the secondary biological databases most of the data are processed and annotated kind of data if you talk about the purpose comparison then the primary biological databases is for the data deposition and curation purpose while the secondary biological databases are actually for the integration and analysis purpose if you see the sources of these kind of data primary biological databases actually derive from the researcher and they are derived from the lab while the secondary biological data sources are taken from the primary databases in the primary biological databases most of the data are raw data related to sequence protein sequence and structure etc because the data are different the data format will be different in these kind of uh, biological database so commonly in the primary biological database you often see fasta fasta q etc on parallel in the secondary biological databases you can see the file format like gff bad etc you can see the frequent update and addition in the primary biological databases but in case of secondary biological database these updates are based on the primary database updates so this is the comparison table between the difference between your primary biological database and secondary biological database please have a look and try to explore this area further I hope you have liked the session don't forget to like and subscribe the channel and do share these information among your scientific endeavors and if any one of you who want to learn these things at the foundation level or at the advanced level can approach us for training and collaboration purpose thank you